Hello hi everyone I'm Shekhar welcome to Momentum Lab I have Deepak with me uh, in today's video we are going to touch upon a very interesting and relevant topic that many of you I have been asking that is which factors are doing well during this downturn we have seen that the markets have started to correct from october last year and uh, overall uh, the small cap mid cap large cap across the market caps we have seen this correction and many people were asking where do we find solace or are there any places within the factor universe that one can find uh, places where they can beat the drawdowns so we'll try to explore see which factors have done well which factors have not done well we will zoom in for the last 6 months and at the end we'll also zoom out because we should not just see the previous 6 months as the only barometer to judge any particular factor we should take a longer period of time to Uh, decide on which factor to go with or a combinations of factor to go with so what we'll do is we'll take the last 20 years and we will do a 3 year rolling returns so let's say we are starting from 2005 jan 1 that's when since the nse indices are uh, available uh, the data is available publicly so we'll take a 3 year returns of jan 1 2005 to jan 1 2008 so that's one 3 year period return similarly we'll take the data of jan 2 2005 till jan 2 2008 that is another 3 year period return till the latest Three year period return, which is thirty first March two thousand twenty two till thirty first March two thousand twenty five. Now, once we have all such three year period returns, that's when we do an average and we get the three year average rolling returns. The same way, we'll calculate the annualized volatility for each of these three year periods, then calculate the average annualized volatility, and then plot on a risk reward space. So, on the y axis we have the reward, on the x axis we have the risk, which is the annualized volatility, and see where does these individual factors lie upon and we'll compare it with the nifty 50 nifty 50 let's assume that is our benchmark so that is our origin and with that origin as a reference we'll see how are the different factors performing so we'll zoom out and see how these individual factors do in overall longer term period and in the short term period uh, how are the factors uh, shaping up so i wanted to take the uh, reference for the previous correction from october 2024 i'll share my screen i'll just show you the nifty chart to uh for you guys how the performance has been so if you see the peak of nifty 50 was somewhere around uh, 30th september 2024 so if you take october 1st as the peak then we are interested in seeing how did the different factors perform from october 1st 2024 till today so it's been exactly 6 months so the performance of nifty uh which is from uh, 1st october 2024 if you see till the recent uh, lowest point it has corrected by 16 and a half percent so this is the uh, performance of nifty 50 let's see how the other factors have done uh, over to you deepak sure thanks shikhar uh, for the introduction i'll uh, i'll use one of the tools that we have developed uh, to zoom into each of these factors compare them with the benchmark that we are considering here as nifty 50 so i'll just uh, quickly share my screen so here let me start with nifty 200 momentum 30 and the second variation as nifty 50 so variation 1 is nifty 200 momentum 30 and variation 2 is nifty 50 so if i run the back test we will now see the nav chart and the drawdowns for both of these variations now what i'll try to do is i'll zoom into the performance from october 2024 so if i do that and let's look at the drawdowns so as you can see from october 2024 um, barring the first couple of weeks or so i think nifty 200 momentum 30 is is underperforming and i think it kind of peaked somewhere here in terms of underperformance it's almost minus 30% compared to the 15% that uh, shaker has referred to um and it still hasn't recovered um and if we look at the monthly performance of momentum 30 versus the nifty 50 if you look at uh, 2024 october it was minus 8% whereas nifty 50 is minus 6% minus 0.7% and minus 4.1% and if you see nifty 50 it is minus 0.3 and minus 2 i think uh, it kind of is severe in the first quarter of 2025 it is almost uh, 
uh, reduced by 10% and 9.6%, whereas uh, in Jan and Feb, it is minus 0 0.4 and minus 5.8 for Nifty 50. So in March, it was 6.3% uh, improvement for Nifty 50. Uh, for momentum, it was 5.6%. So if you move on to uh, three-year rolling returns, so, so far, momentum has been doing pretty well. Um, and it kind of converging here. And one thing that you can notice is, you know, whenever it is converging, you know, it kind of again bounces back and, you know, started uh, performing better than Nifty 50. So if you see the 2020 uh, merge here, here it is kind, kind of converging here. And it, again, you see improved performance. Uh, the same thing here in 2021 um, and also the same thing here in 2023 march 2023 so that's that's it that's what you're seeing uh throughout um i think broadly from 2012 is when you can see momentum has been performing before that it is almost similar to nifty 50 uh since the time we had this data so and same is the case for five-year rolling returns uh, if you see seven-year re rolling returns actually the performance of momentum has been um, quite good compared to the nifty 50 performance um, it was barely uh, meeting um, both these curves uh, except in 2014 and uh, 2015 so Overall momentum has been doing well, uh, but they are slowly converging now, as we have seen in the three-year rolling return. Yeah. And if actually we see these convergence points, especially on the three-year rolling returns, they actually provide a good entry points. Or even if you see the five-year rolling returns, because after convergence of Nifty 50 and uh, Nifty 20 momentum 30 rolling returns, that's when the outperformance of momentum uh, starts to happen. So that's about momentum. It has a pretty bad uh, last six months. Let's take a look at the next index, which is Nifty 200 uh, value 30. Okay, I'll move on to Nifty 200 value 30 and run the back test again. So we are limiting all the factors to the large cap universe. We don't want to bring uh, the uh, small cap universe because we are comparing it with Nifty 50, right? So we want it mostly to stick with the large cap universe. Yeah. and. If you look at the performance of uh, Nifty 200 value 30, which is the blue line here, compared to the red line, which is Nifty 50, I think uh, it is still underperforming compared to Nifty 50, but but it is not as bad as Momentum uh, 30. So if you see, I think uh, the worst it did was minus 22%, whereas uh, if you remember for Momentum 30, it was almost touching uh, 30, minus 30%. And if you look at the monthly returns for uh, value, I think it was minus 9.1 in October compared to minus 6.1 in October for Nifty 50. Um, and the, the major uh, highlight here is that you know, value has rebounded uh, pretty well in March 2025, almost 13% improvement. Uh, compared to 6.3% for Nifty 50. Yeah, I think that can be seen in the drawdown also, if you see. Uh, the drawdowns have started to converge. The blue line is the Nifty 200 value 30 and the red is Nifty 50. So, you know, it is inching closer to Nifty 50 value right now. Correct. And if you look at three-year rolling returns, I think value has been doing well. Um, since 2022. Before that, it was underperforming the benchmark, uh, which is Nifty 50 here. Um, and, you know, even I mean, you can see the same thing for five year rolling returns as well. Value has started to improve from 2020 onwards. So, even though it was underperforming the Nifty 50 in three year rolling returns, if you see from the 2020 lows, it started to converge. I mean, the outperformance has started to happen, as in the improvement, the trajectory had started to go up much rapidly than Nifty 50, and uh, it converged somewhere in 2022, and the outperformance started. So it is in stark difference as compared to Nifty momentum, 230. 
the momentum right now is converging with nifty 50 whereas value is showing significant divergence and our performance as compared to uh, nifty 50 isn't it yeah and and shaker uh, if you if you remember how the chart was for momentum 30 um it was consistently doing well compared to nifty 50 starting 2014 onwards 2012 onwards but correct now if you see for value i think you know it was doing well for some time and then underperforming and then doing well and underperforming so i think uh, we need to It's get deeply cyclical yeah 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 it is cyclical uh, kind of a nature i think that is reflected in uh, we did in the previous video also that uh, we wanted to see how the value uh, does over a period of time as we have seen it has a bouts of underperformance and overperformance so the timing is pretty important and uh, relying on uh, uh, the uh, just the uh, by staying in the value index for a longer period of time doesn't alone ensure that we'll outperform the, the entry and exit is also equally important especially in value so okay uh, now i move on to the next uh, factor which is nifty 200 quality 30 so here again i'll just consider the last 6 months of data I'll zoom into that and if you look at the drawdowns here i think quality is is also i think the maximum was minus 22% um compared to a nifty 50 of uh, minus 15% let's look at the monthly returns to see how it is how it has fared compared to nifty 50 Minus eight point six in October versus minus six point one um, in Feb. It it was bad. Minus eleven point eleven percent compared to minus five point eight percent, five point seven um, versus six point three percent. If you see the three year rolling returns, um, I think they are pretty much you know converging since twenty uh, seventeen onwards, right? So they they seem to be the same. um in terms of performance uh before that i think you know quality was doing um better than the benchmark yeah the qualities performance was pretty good between 2008 to 2014 or 15 times uh when it had a good out performance especially after gfc when uh, the smart money started to value good companies with good books low debt that's where all these uh asian paints pretty light uh had a wonderful performance i'm even them taking the names of the stocks nothing to do with any recommendation it is just for informational purposes and the quality is time looks uh over especially uh, looking at the uh, three year rolling returns with respect to nifty 50 they both are the same absolutely the same especially if you look at the convergence they are uh, very closely entangled and intertwined the last 10 years yeah yeah okay i'll now move on to the next factor which is nifty 100 low all 30 since we don't have a nifty 200 low all 30 i'll i'll pick this one let's see how they are in ticket from october yeah these are pretty close in terms of the drawdowns um and if you see our maximum drawdown was minus 18% in the last 6 months compared to minus 15% for nifty 50 if you look at the monthly returns we had minus 8% in october uh, compared to minus 6.1% for nifty 50 minus 7.1 in feb versus minus 5.8% for nifty 50 so they are very close compared to the other factors that we have noticed yeah so if you look at the three year rolling returns yeah it was it was converging um very nicely with nifty 50 same with five year rolling returns and and also you know the seven year rolling returns um you know which was not the case you know say before 2018 yeah i think one more peculiarity of low volatility is that unlike quality or value low volatility factor has either been outperforming or been closely mimicking the nifty 15 index so right from uh, the inception if you see it has never underperformed the nifty 50 for considerable amount of time at all so it's mostly above or uh, same as nifty 50 so that's been one of the exceptions of uh, low vol index yeah so if if you have to summarize then uh, what we see is that 
low wall has done pretty well in the last 6 months then comes value and then comes quality and the last is momentum in terms of drawdown protection that's the zoom zoomed in version let's see the zoom out version yeah so if we are comparing the three year rolling returns of each of these factors uh with nifty 50 mind you we are looking at the last 20 years of data here to compare these factors here on the x axis we have volatility nifty 200 momentum 30 is is by far the best in terms of the returns and nifty 50 um is is the lowest in terms of the returns uh in terms of volatility uh, i think as the name suggests uh, low volatility has the lowest volatility um and value seems to have the highest volatility i think we have seen that it's it seems to be performing uh, in certain time periods and underperforming in in other time periods uh quality is sitting between low volatility and momentum um so it it doesn't have a very high volatility uh, as momentum and value um but the returns are somewhere between low wall value um and momentum 30 any other comments uh, shikhar any other insights yeah, i think that's it if uh, uh if you zoom out the results show that quality and low wall have a higher sharp ratio when you compare it, uh, when you do a rewards divided by risk you get a highest sharp ratio but that is if you plot from origin and uh, uh, drop a line uh, at, at where these bubbles are that is slope and if the higher the slope value it means higher is the sharp ratio value is a cyclical that's what we have seen in the rolling returns as well as you can see in the volatility that we have plotted i think it best comes to visualization when we plot the nifty 50 so that's when you'll know where the uh, benchmark is so that you can have a comparison and nifty momentum uh, as we can see has the highest uh rewards and not necessarily the highest reward per unit of risk mm. yep uh, that's been the summary thanks a lot for uh, watching this video guys none of this is any recommendation it is only for educational purpose thanks everyone have a nice day thanks everyone bye